to Scattered Terrain. My name's Meredith, and today I'm going to show you how I make my little training dummies. Here's what you're going to need. Some barbecue skewers, or any stick about this size, a few washers, a hot glue gun, preferably with a low temperature setting, a cup of cool water, a pair of scissors, some embroidery thread, or a twisted apart piece of yarn or twine, some paper towel, PVA glue, and your paint. You're also going to want your black wash, and I like to have a mini handy with this one to use for scale. Alright, so we're going to start off with our wooden skewer, and then we're going to mark the lengths here of roughly where I'm going to be shaping the head and body. I found that for the average humanoid training dummy, good places to mark it out are at 1 8th, 1 quarter, and 1 half inch down from the top of the stick. And I'm just going to continue these lines all the way around the stick. That way, no matter what side I'm looking at it from, I can still see the lines. And then we're just going to color out here the bit that we don't want to get glue on. So there you can see I've got my head and my torso. Now we're going to actually shape the body. So you want to get your cup of cool water and a paper towel handy. And grab your glue gun. Now you're going to just barely put any pressure at all onto the trigger of your glue gun while sort of teasing the tip back and forwards to slowly start building up a little bit of glue just at the very end of the stick. Once you have enough built up to be a good size for a head, you want to go ahead and spin the stick between your fingers for a bit, and this spinning motion allows you to use gravity to help the glue fall into a nice rounded shape there at the end. Once it's the shape that you want it to be, stick it down into your water, and that cool water helps the hot glue to cool almost immediately. And once the glue has cooled, just dry it off, make sure it's set, and now we'll build the body. You're going to do the exact same thing of squeezing ever so slightly on that trigger, and use that back and forward motion to build up the glue. Now on this, you do want to hold it at a slight angle so that that gravity helps you out again and helps the body to be lower on the stick. Spin it around a bit, help it to even out. And when you're happy with it, back in the water it goes. Now I'm using a stirring motion here, that way it's staying in cool water the whole time. If you keep it in one place, you'll start to warm up the water right around it and it won't cool off as quickly. Then let's dry this off and take a look at it. I like the shape, let's see how we're doing for scale. Yeah, it looks good, that's about right for the head and body of your basic humanoid. Let's just get this out of the way. And now we're going to cut down our stick to a good height. So from the bottom of our torso, you're going to measure down exactly one inch and make a new line. And then we're just going to cut it on the line. Now for me, cutting through this with my scissors actually was a little bit too much, so I switched out for my utility knife. In order to cut through a stick with your craft knife, you want to lay it on the line, put a little bit of downward pressure, and then slowly start rolling the stick backwards and forwards along the table using your knife blade, and this will gently work a groove into the stick. And once you've scored it most of the way through, you can then snap it fairly easily, and it gives you a pretty clean edge. Next, we're going to grab a square of parchment paper and our washers. This is what's going to form the base of our dummy and provide enough weight that it's not going to tip over easily on the table. Start by putting a nice dollop of hot glue right into the center of your parchment, and then you're going to stack the two washers on top of each other and set them right down into the center of that blob of glue. Press down on the edges, and that glue should bubble up in the center. Then you're going to take your dummy stick and put the stick right into that dollop of hot glue. You just have to make sure you keep holding him up straight while the glue cools, and you're set. Now he's ready for our next step. In order to find out what size circle we need to cut, let's measure how tall our dummy is. So overall, he measures an inch and a half in height, but just measuring the torso, he's coming in at 5 eighths of an inch. To make a circle, I'm actually going to start by cutting a square. Since we're going to want to make a circle that is a little more than twice that size, I'm going to start by cutting out a square here that is one and three quarters of an inch. 
Now the reason that we're making this more than just twice his height is that we need to have that little bit extra so that it has room to travel in and out where we're going to be cinching it tight at his neck and at the bottom of his torso. Now we just need to turn this square into a circle. So you're going to want to fold it in half point to point and then fold it in half again and then in half a third time. Now this is where you want to stop. If you see here, if you try to fold it one more time, you can no longer fold it cleanly point to point. That's how you know you're at the right place. You want to hold on to the center of the paper towel, and then starting from the shorter edge, cut a nice semicircle across to the taller edge. And you want to aim for about the same distance away from the point that you're starting from. And then when we unfold it, that gets us pretty darn close to a circle. And you're going to want to pre-cut two pieces of string and pre-tie a loop into them. That way it's ready when we need it. Now don't be afraid to cut this string much longer than you actually need it to be. It will make your life so much easier to get a hold of when you're trying to tie knots later. And then you just want to put the head of your dummy right into that center point that we've created on the paper towel. And then wrap the paper towel down over your dummy. And you want to make sure to pinch it in and gather it around right underneath the head. And that's where we're going to tie our first string for the neck. Drop your loop over his head and then gently pull that string tight. And it will naturally find its way down into the smallest spot between your two hot glue blobs. So don't worry about not finding exactly the right place. The string will guide itself. Then once you've tied a second knot to lock it in place, just shorten those strings up to a more realistic length. And then you're going to want to tease out your folds a little bit to make sure that you don't have any big bunches. And then form the paper towel down over the rest of the body and pinch it around the stick. Then drop your second loop over the top. And right before you pull it all the way tight, you want to check and see where the knot on the neck is. And then spin the dummy around until your knots are roughly lined up. That way your dummy has a clear front and back. Once you're happy with where your knot is, go ahead and pull it tight. And then do a quick second knot to lock it down. And then trim those strings as well. Now you do not want to actually cut the strings all the way to the knot or your knot might untie itself. You do want to leave a little bit of string hanging down. All right, and there you have it. The torso of the dummy all tied up. Now it's time to cut the circle of paper towel out for the base. So we're going to go ahead and measure our washer here. And it looks like it comes out pretty well at half an inch. Now once again, we don't want to just double this number. We need to add that little bit extra to have room to tie it off. So instead of going for one inch, we're going to go for one and a quarter. Then take your one and a quarter inch square and fold it point to point once, twice, three times. Pinch the center of the paper towel and cut that arc over to about the same height on the other side. Then unfold it out into your circle and place the washer right in the middle. Then you're going to cut another length of string out for this guy and give it that pre-tied loop. And set that aside until we're ready for it and then gather up the paper towel. Now I find the easiest way to keep this from bunching funny is to bring the two sides up to the middle and then make it four corners to the middle and then just sort of press flat those four flags that stick out. This tends to give a pretty even uniform bunching all the way around. Then once again, make sure you're looking at where your knots are tied so that everybody's on the same side. Drop your loop over the top and then once your loop is over the paper towel, Pull it tight. Check and make sure your knots are all in the right place and then put that second knot to lock it down and trim your strings. And he's ready for his PVA bath. We're also going to want to make his arms. So take another small square of paper towel and just sort of accordion fold it onto itself and twist it a little bit until you get a nice little tube. Now this looks like I actually have a little bit too much. So I'm going to trim this into a slightly smaller piece and just twist it a little bit to help it compact down on itself. There, that looks about the right size. And then we're going to cut ourselves a couple more pieces of string and tie our pre-loops into them. And then slip it over our paper towel tube and pull it tight. 
Now using the next string, we're sort of gonna turn this into a little sausage. The next loop we're gonna put down anywhere from a quarter inch to half an inch below that knot before tying it tight. Now you wanna make sure that you tie on one string for every arm that you're going to make, plus an extra. You never know if something's gonna go wrong and having an extra is almost always worth it. So here I'm tying three because my dummy needs two arms, plus that one extra just in case. And we're gonna trim off our extra strings, again leaving just a little bit left, and add this to the PVA bath as well. So I'm gonna grab my plastic tray, that way it won't stick while drying and we'll just place my dummy and my little paper towel sausage on here, and then grab that 50-50 blend of PVA glue and water, and give a nice coating all over the paper towel. And just work through that a bit with your fingers, and make sure that everything is good and wet. You don't wanna have any dry patches in here. Once they're fully saturated, you wanna wipe up any extra white glue and water mix that you have in the tray because it is much easier to clean it up now when it's wet than if you wait until after it's dry. And then we'll set these guys aside to harden. Once he's completely dry and hard, we're ready to move on to the final step in our assembly. So you're gonna wanna grab that little paper towel sausage and your scissors, and then you're gonna wanna cut just above one of the knots. I like to go about an eighth of an inch, and then cut about that same distance on the other side of the knot as well. This is going to form one arm. So then you want to do the same process on the next knot and trim at just about an eighth of an inch to either side of that knot. Now where you cut this with the scissors, it's going to have compressed the end together. So you just want to squeeze it between your fingers and roll it back and forth until the ending is round again. Do this on both sides of all the arms you've cut. Now you want to make sure that your arms are even before you stick them on the dummy. And it actually looks like this one is a little bit longer than the other, so I'm just gonna trim off a little more off this guy, and then round him back out here. Take a look. Yeah, that's better. Those are about the same size now. Then you're gonna grab your bottle of PVA glue. Now this has not been watered down. This is full strength. And you're gonna put a little dot right on the open end of one of your arms. Then check for where your knots are to make sure that you know where the back of your dummy is, and attach the arm just below the line of the neck. Now you're gonna wanna hold that there for a moment so that the white glue has a chance to bond itself, but it's actually surprisingly quickly. PVA bonds to paper towel really fast. Then you're gonna wanna put a little bit of PVA glue onto the other arm and put it directly across the dummy from the first arm, also putting it right below that string that ties the neck. And hold on to it for just a moment so that it can lock in place. Now set him aside for at least an hour just to make sure that those arms are fully dry before we move on to our next step. All right, those arms aren't going anywhere. Now we're ready to paint. So I'm going to grab my very fancy palette and my base color for canvas sacks and put a little bit here on my palette. Then grab a damp brush and give all of the paper towel a nice base coat with this color. And then I'm gonna grab the color that I use for base coating wood and put a little bit of that down. And then I'm just gonna put a nice coating of that wood base color all over the barbecue skewer. I didn't bother cleaning my brush out in between because these two colors are similar enough that if it mixes up a little bit on the stick, I really don't mind. All right, and then we'll set him aside to dry. And once he's dry, we're gonna go ahead and give him a dip wash. So we're gonna grab an extra little bit of paper towel and our dipping string, and then that jar of black wash. I keep my black wash in this wide mouth jar to make it nice and easy to get things in and out for dip washing. So I'm gonna take hold of my string and I'm gonna pinch it on either side of one of my fingers to create a nice little loop here. And then I'm gonna just tuck it under my training dummy's arms. Then in one smooth motion, we go all the way down until he's fully submerged and then pull him right back up. Tap him off on the paper towel to get rid of the excess. And then set him onto the cardboard. Gently pull away that string and set him aside to dry. Once he's completely dried from his dip wash, it is time for dry brushing. So we're back to the fancy palette and a piece of paper towel. And then I'm gonna grab that original canvas sack base color again. 
and put a little bit more onto the palette here. And then for my dry brushing, I'm gonna grab this really cheap eyeshadow brush that I got at the dollar store. And then you're gonna work that paint into your bristles, work the excess off onto the paper towel, and then starting from the top and using a downward stroke, you're gonna dry brush all of the paper towel on your dummy. Now this means making sure that you get the top of the arms, but not really doing much to the bottoms. And then get a little bit more paint worked into your brush here and do the exact same for the canvas sack holding up the base. And then we're gonna grab that same wood base color again and dry brush the wooden stick. Then we're gonna grab our third color of paint here, which is for painting the strings. Get a little bit of that. And we're gonna switch over to a fine detail brush. If you don't have a fine detail brush, you can also do this with the tip of a toothpick. Now here's the best way that I've found to paint small detail without having my shakes be too much of an issue. I hold whatever I'm painting in one hand, and then I use my pinky of the hand that I'm painting with to lock against the fingers of the hand that's holding the item, and then I'm able to lay the rest of my hand on top of my pinky and use that as an anchor point to drag my paintbrush along the surface of whatever it is I'm holding. All right, and then you just wanna make sure that you get all of the strings painted. So there's the string around the neck, the string around the bottom of the torso, one on each arm, and then make sure that you flip them over and paint that final string around the base. So when you're done, you should have five strings painted in total. And then we're gonna grab our final paint color, a nice dark red. And this is what we're using to paint the target on his chest. In order to get that perfect circle for the center of my target, I'm gonna use this little wooden dowel as a stamp. So I'm gonna make sure that I work some paint into the fibers of the end of the stick, and then do a couple of test stamps off onto the palette. Yeah, that's looking good. Then do a quick check for knots, make sure which is your front and back, and press your stamp to the center front of the torso of your dummy. I didn't have quite enough paint on my stamp anymore. Let me load that up again. Press that down one more time. And while I'm pressing down, I'm gonna twist it slightly between my fingers to help make sure I get a good solid coating of red underneath. Then we're gonna swap back out to that detail brush and fill in the little bit of missing part on the circle here. The fold of the paper towel kept part of it from making contact. And then we're gonna use that same red color with our detail brush to paint a second circle outside of that dot. Now this part, you just have to practice freehanding it a little bit. What I like to do is start with the four points above, below, and to either side of the circle and make a little red dot at roughly the same distance away on all four sides. Then just connect those dots together, trying to follow sort of the edge of the dot, leaving about the same distance between the dot and the line that I'm making. And just remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are being painted by an NPC after all, and it's entirely possible that he's not that good at painting circles either. And once you've finished painting that outer circle of the target, he is all done. As an optional final step, I do like to take my pieces outside and give them a good once over with a clear matte spray varnish for protection. And so here is the final training dummy. And once you've made one training dummy, well, you may as well go ahead and make enough for the whole class. Now that I've shown you how I make my training dummies, let's see how they look on the table. As you traverse deeper into the forest, a growing sound begins to disturb the peace of this ancient wood. Moving stealthily towards the noise, you find cover at the edge of a clearing. There before you lies the training camp for the necromancer's recently arisen thralls. It's at this moment that you lock eyes with the necromancer, and you realize she's looking right back at you. Roll for initiative. All right, and so there you have it, a basic humanoid training dummy. If I get enough interest in the comment section down below, I just might make a beholder training dummy in one of my future videos. In the meantime, if you liked what you saw here today, tune in next time. I'm going to show you how I make a basic bedroll. Stick around. Thanks for spending some of your time here with me at Scattered Terrain. 
If you liked that video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.